Well, I would say that the feeling comes uh, many times from my demanding. <laughs> My name is Mark Landsman, and I'm the director and producer of the film Thunder Soul. Uh, last night we had our Philadelphia premiere, actually our East Coast premiere of the movie um, at the Through the Scribe uh, Media Center uh, at the International House Theater. It was a really great crowd of people. Um, felt very honored to be there. It's a privilege to show the film in Philly. If there's no drama, there's no timing. Can you hear the drama? At a time when everything was changing. It was the 70s. It was sexy. It was Afros. It was girls, girls, girls. They were the hottest, baddest band around. We were called Thunder Soul. We was the ball. It was the baddest band in the nation. And they brought the funk huh, like no one else could. But they were just good. Not good as in mm -hmm good. Good as in God created the world to be good. And the cold part about it was... They were only in high school. Thunder Soul tells the story of Conrad Prof Johnson, who was a legendary music educator, Houston, Texas. Um, Prof was teaching music as back as the 50s. He was, a, he was a phenomenal saxophone player. He played with Jimmy Lunsford and any of the big bands that would come through Houston back in the day. Prof was one of the go-to saxophone players in the area. Um, but he made a decision fairly early on in his career that he wanted to be a family man and he didn't want to travel and live the musician's life. So he decided to become a music educator. He took a job at Cashmere High School uh, in the Third Ward in Houston at the time. Um, very underfunded, under-resourced school. Um, and the music program was basically mediocre at best. And he took that program and he infused it heavily with jazz education and instrumental music and um, taught these kids how to read and write and play incredible music. Um, and at the time, the high school competition circuit in the South in particular was segregated and black high schools were not invited. Ironically, you know, the, the idiom that was played is jazz, but they weren't invited. So Prof broke the color barrier, got these kids into these competitions. And then once they were there, he realized they were totally bored with the kind of music that was being played, which was like a very bleached down version of the jazz that they were listening to. Um, and they were uninspired. So Prof, being a very brilliant kind of composer and arranger, he actually took all of their music and rearranged it into funk and then let them loose on these competitions where they just completely kicked ass. Now, hey everybody, what's going on, what's going on? 30 years later, they're getting back together. This one looks smaller for some reason. To honor the man that brought them together, Conrad Prof Johnson. I learned about this story from National Public Radio. I was just in my office one day and I was uh, listening to this incredible music come through my radio. It was a big, bold, funk sound and I assumed that it was the JBs or any of those other obvious choices from the era. And uh, I was amazed when the reporter came on to say, um, isn't this incredible? These are 15, 16 year old high school kids from Houston, Texas, circa 1972. And literally the hair on my arms stood up. I said, this is an incredible story. Someone should tell this story. And so I, I just went to my computer and I looked up every Conrad Johnson I could find in the Houston area. And there were four. And I just called the first one. And this guy picks up the phone and I said, I just heard you on the radio. You're incredible. And he said, now that you just heard my dad. This is Conrad Jr. And I said, wow. So he said, but if you want to talk to my dad, um, here's his phone number. So he gives me Prof's phone number. And I was so freaked out that I had the man's phone number that I waited a week to call him to get up the courage to, to call him. Roadside Attractions <laughs> presents the award-winning new film that is sweeping audiences off their feet. Really curious to see how are we going to sound. I have not picked up that horn since 1978. Well, this was a very, very tight-knit African-American community that Cashmere High School was in. This was an all-black high school, and this was a very tight, supportive community. But these kids' parents, this, they're coming right out of the civil rights movement. And so this is the dawn of a completely new era, stylistically, musically, um, in terms of expression. All kinds of things are happening, and these kids are living it firsthand. And Prof just happened to be there at a time to recognize all of this kind of change, and he nurtured it. Instead of suppressing it, which was going on in a lot of other places, a lot of schools didn't have arts programs back then. They still don't. He pumped everything that he had into 
making sure that these kids got a first class music education. It didn't matter that the school was underfunded, he didn't care. He was going to bring all that he knew, which was high level professionalism, to this school. And, he, and, and you know, they didn't have any resources. These kids had to go out and gig in Houston to pay for their uniforms, to pay for their instruments, to pay for their sheet music. And they did. And, uh, and they had to raise the money through the community to go to Europe. You know, no one was, it wasn't like the school district wrote a check. <laughs> you know, they had to have car washes and bake sales and do everything that they could, but they, but they rallied behind. Um, so the amazing thing for me, just as a storyteller, was how that had a ripple effect on the entire school. It's like once the music department started doing well, you know, suddenly all the, all the other departments were kind of rising up. You know, the math department, you know, all of the, all the academic departments were excelling for the first time in the school's history that, you know, the, the basketball team goes to state. And all these connections were made because of the tone that Prof set. You bring the arts and music into a public school like that, or any school, and suddenly you've elevated a level of self-esteem and pride and creative self-expression that wasn't there before. That's going to make a difference when a kid is in his history class or her music, you know, or her, or her math class or whatever. You know, they're just going to school with the, with, with the whole kind of attitude that this is a place, oh, this, I'm learning things. I'm learning music, I'm learning math, I'm learning history, I'm learning, you know, but I'm learning. You know, like, and, and, that, and Prof was really, he was invested in the whole kid. My hopes for the film are that we get wide theatrical distribution because we've seen over and over again that audiences are really responding to it. It's a very inspirational story and it's a fun movie and people have a good time. You know, you were there last night, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a fun experience and it's a theatrical experience and you want to kind of be around other people. So I'm hoping that we, that this gets into movie theaters and that distributors recognize that this is a movie that people should see. And then beyond that, I want, I want the movie to be used as a tool for people who are advocating for arts education in the public schools for kids. I want, I want policymakers to see the movie and go, oh, you know what, we should be voting to support music and arts education in the schools. We should be allocating money for that instead of taking money away from the things that mean a lot to kids. So I hope it's, it's that. And then in terms of the band, I mean, the band is doing amazing. Um, the band has, um, for over a year and a half, they've been rehearsing intensely. They're gigging all over the place. They just, we, we had our Los Angeles premiere at the Los Angeles Film Festival at a 1,200 seat arena, which they sold out. And after the movie was over, the band came on and they got a standing ovation and the audience stayed on their feet for an hour while they played a set, which was just epic. <laughs> you know? So they're incredible. And they're gigging, uh, hopefully, in a town near you soon. Get ready to go on a musical journey. One, two, three, four. Thunder Soul. My deepest hopes for this reunion concert is that I get a major record deal. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put it into other words. My name is Mark Landsman, and you're watching Real Black.